So I'm here at 412, the home of Bastion, Prova, mm. Velocraft, mm. Rider Fit, Rider Fit. Uh, superb Velo Service, yep. the list goes on. I th- yeah, I think that's pretty much it officially. There might okay. be a few other businesses that... Yeah. Okay. Uh, James is with me. James is a co-founder of Bastion. I guess the, the person that brought everyone together here as well. The herder of cats, the maybe. The herder oh. of, very, yeah. uh, of craftsmen. Yeah, we're having fun. And you're launching a new product for Bastion. We are, yep. We've been working on it for a little while, but it's uh, now ready to be publicly reviewed. Um, we've got a new cockpit, so bar, fork, and stem combination for, for that's compatible with our Bastion road bikes, yep. Yeah, right, okay. And uh, how many years has this taken to bring out? It sounds like it's been a bit of a process. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I think I started drawing it two years ago. Um, we really made inroads uh during lockdown we had um you know more time to do r&d when we weren't producing bicycles every day um so yeah it has been a bit of a journey it's not something we take lightly like a a fork and uh and and bar stem is no joke in terms of the severity of um uh, requirements when things go wrong with a fork it's not it's not good so um yeah we've we've done a lot of uh testing and we have people like Raul Lucia, Lucia Tech involved with, um, in the QC process for our carbon fiber components of yep. the fork. Yeah, he's, he's doing like the scans yeah. and that type of stuff on the, on yeah. the fork, isn't he? Yep. And he's been involved throughout the R&D process. So as we've um, developed our carbon fiber tube manufacturing in the composites lab upstairs, Raul's been scanning uh, parts as we go and we'll continue scanning as part of the production QC entry level um, introduction to this to the system uh, you designed it what what were you hoping to achieve by yeah. by creating your own fork so uh, there's lots of reasons uh, we've gone down this path uh, from a functionality point of view we had a lot of customers asking about integrated cables so it's uh, it's got completely hidden integrated cables um, and we've done that uh, by keep keeping the smaller uh, upper headset bearing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the other things that are on the market have had to go to a bigger bearing, which we feel like has kind of compromised the visual weight at the top of the bike. So we've managed to squeeze it in with that smaller bearing at the top. Um, it uses a, a D-shaped steerer, but um, it's got some neat features, um, like a flare at the bottom that completely captures it in the, in the crown. Obviously, we're using some titanium components and some carbon components, which is our, I guess, area of expertise yep. in... Um, so uh, there's that. We also get the benefit of being able to do custom geometry and be not beholden to having to purchase in a fork. Mm. So for small builders such as us, um, it's the normal process is to find a fork um, to fit to your frame. Um, but you're limited to fork rake, so 45 or 50, 43, that kind of thing. So by doing our own fork in-house, we can specify whatever fork rake we want and tune the handling uh, yeah. to exactly what sorry if, if, if you're getting any feedback in the background there it is because we are in the building where they're hurriedly uh, rushing to get bikes built for tomorrow which is the the handmade bicycle show so yeah. Yeah, uh, you might hear some some noise in the background totally understandable because bikes are being built uh, but back to the fork and the the handlebar and mm. that's all made in house everything yeah. here that we that you're launching is is yeah internal so, so literally titanium powder and uh raw carbon fiber come in the front door and um yeah a fork well the frame as well but the fork and the cockpit are going out yeah yeah and traditionally uh, i guess previously you've you've spec'd maybe envy forks on the front of your bikes yes yeah. so definitely yeah. our custom popular choice for our customers has been envy fork envy cockpit um thm fork and cockpits also pretty popular okay um so we're still offering though they're still available to customers but we're we're specking the um the bastion cockpit as an upgrade and uh you get a little bit more tunability in the the front end geometry yeah interesting okay and weight wise like what's uh what sort of figures are you hitting here how does it compare to maybe an mv yep. cockpit setup yeah it's marginally heavier than an mv fork um and the, the, on the fork side of things the bar stem combination is similar to like the black ink um, combination bar stem that we've also specced on many of our bikes um, but we're okay with that um, it's definitely as I said at the start not a product to push down to a safety factor of one so 
um, yeah, it's in the tens of grams heavier than an Envy fork, but yep. that's totally fine. But it's giving you custom fork rake ability. Any any difference in ride quality that you're aiming for here, or is it trying to match what was previously there? We've benchmarked the Envy fork yep. and some other forks on the market for longitudinal stiffness and, and ride quality, yeah. Okay. So I know James Wong's currently listening to this and... <laughs> yelling out saying oh you know internal cabling yeah this is this is a bad direction for the industry going yeah, 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 questions is. over yeah. d-shaped steerer tubes yeah. you're actually doing something kind of unique here with the reinforcement of that steerer tube can you yeah. go into the detail there yeah it's almost like when i was drawing it i had james in my ear so you have we've had to go to a, a form of a d-shaped steerer tube to get the cables in as i said to you a little bit earlier the front face of our d is not completely flat it does have a little bit of curvature, which gives you a lot more buckling stiffness. Um, so that's that's one thing. But then the major compromise, I guess, is um, at the stem portion where you're clamping across the steerer, the risk of crushing that steerer. So for our system, we have a bonded in uh, compression a titanium plug, a 3D printed bonded in plug, which um, means that the, the steerer tube is completely supported across that, uh, that clamped joint. Um, and we can kind of get away with that as a solution because of the bespoke nature of our bikes. We know every bike that goes out what the effective handlebar uh, stack and reach needs to be. We can trim the steerer tube to its design length and bond in a compression plug and we don't need that amount of adjustability you would need on a, a yeah. you know a uh, mass produced bike you're telling me there is about 10 millimeters to play with in that height you can yeah. trim about 10 mils yeah. off and still have yeah so have if, enough support. if our customer has started at a um you know with a, with a little bit of a spacer which is common if they're like maybe looking forward and hoping to get down to a slightly more aggressive position yeah we've left 10 millimeters of adjustability in that bonded in compression plug so you can still trim it to some degree and there's enough threaded length in there to keep using it cool one uh one major pain point of internal systems can mm. be cable routing mm. uh you've done again i guess the ability with the the 3d printing yeah you show me some pretty cool stuff can you can you talk that sure. about that well i'll uh i'll back james up in that there's nothing nothing's going to replace having external cables where you can see where they are fair enough but um if you're going to have to have them internal yeah we've done some things like having uh we call them wormholes but they're basically uh, catch cones and shapes within the titanium printed parts that as a cable approaches that area, whether it's in the, f in the fork crown or at the, uh, the drops, there's basically a cone which is gonna catch that cable on its way in. And once you've put the cable in, there's nowhere else for it to go but through the wormhole that you need it to go in. So for example, um, underneath the stem there, there's two entry ports one port will take you to the right, one port will take you to the left. It's completely hidden within the, the, the top cap there. So whatever cable goes into that right-hand one is going to get sent out towards the right-hand lever. And all going well, you could do it without looking at it just by pushing it through. Yeah. We're doing most of the building on the, on yeah, the, on okay. the complete builds. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's our problem, not someone else's. What's the handlebar assembly? What are we looking at? Is it one piece, The this is it a titanium stem bonded to a carbon handlebar? Yeah, so the crossbar is carbon. Yeah. Um, and it it's kind of embodies our, I guess, ethos or our strategy that the carbon fiber is excellent at straight lines and simple shapes. Mm -hmm. So that's where we use it. That's what it's good for. So the, the crossbar is carbon fiber. Um, the stem is titanium and that lets us tune the stem length and angle easily and then the drops are titanium as well um, and we did that where's the join for that how far up the bar uh, is it the is it? join so it's past the shift lever yeah past the shift lever so yep. the shift lever is clamping over a titanium portion yeah also uh, given some of the recent failures yeah yep. i feel quite good about that yeah um and then it lets us put a lot of that de that cable routing detail that I was talking about into the titanium complex part to capture the cable Where and bring the bend it out is ports. Sure. And then getting carbon to go around the drop is no easy feat. So, okay. um, yeah, we've kept the carbon fiber portion of the part as simple as it can be in terms of shape. Yeah. And then used the titanium. Um, where it makes sense for detail or customization. So that, that obviously the customization part, you're obviously locked into a set width and, and length once you've selected it. But what sort of options are you offering before that? 
Oh, you so can print anything, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So we can print the stem down to a length of, I don't know, probably 80 mil long. Okay. Yeah. Um, our test length is 130 mil long. So all of our durability and strength testing is done based on the worst case stem. Okay. Um, the longest lever ratio, longest moment. Um, and then bar width is tunable by where you trim the carbon bar. Mm. So we can do bar width, you know, out to four, 460 wide down to... We haven't had any Adam Hansen spec requests no. yet, but um, no. yeah, quite quite narrow if that's what you want. Yeah, cool. And then headset-wise, using standard bearings? Yeah, standard bearings. Uh, headset. Special um, compression? Yeah. yeah. The, trick, the trick is the, uh, the little ring that goes underneath the top cap to the to the top bearing it's a 3d printed titanium ring at this stage okay. and it has it also has essentially ports in it for our cables to pass through and controls um yeah the cable position as well as the um the load distribution from the upper bearing to the steerer tube gotcha okay uh compatibility wise with the bike we're looking at has a uh, sram axis mm. etap on it yep. um can it handle di2 wires yep. it can okay can handle di2 wires uh i've also designed in eps compatibility i'll have to ask ben whether anybody's ordered that yet mm. um but yes okay compatible for wires and brake hoses they're not mechanical for obvious reasons no not mechanical yeah. and yep. we've never had um mechanical compatibility on our bikes interesting okay in, as it All stands right. yeah I somehow overlooked that all right yeah, we do <laughs> we do offer a rim brake model but um and, yeah, and you might think that people want. Oh, if I'm going to do the rim brake, I want mechanical as well. But no, not necessarily. Ele yeah. Electronic plus rim brake. There's still a niche for that. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like if you're buying a 3D titanium printed bike with you know, internally made uh, carbon tubes, that mechanical might not be the right fit for that bike. So not necessarily. You know, kind of in different no. different centuries. It's not an indie pack machine. Yeah. No. Okay. I should point out that it. This is only for disc brake as well, obviously. Disc brake only. Yep. This for whole fork design. Okay. And available when? Available for order from now. From so, now? Um, okay. We, have a, we do have some customers that have jumped on board early. So for existing people with a build slot in the queue, um, we're starting to, build, starting to build towards their production volume now. Um, but yeah, available for order now. Um, our lead time is blowing out. Uh, like the whole industry, um, we're recording 10 months at the moment. Okay. Uh, without going into too many details of the price, what sort of upgrade costs are we looking at over the previous maybe MV cockpit, cockpit and yeah. fork? So it's a, yeah, it's a, f it's a 1500 Australian dollar upgrade yep. over an equivalent Envy cockpit that, okay. we, that we'd offer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So still a very premium product, but uh, yeah. yeah, it is. And uh, I guess just because people are going to be annoyed that I don't ask this, but uh, any plans to make it available aftermarket? It's interesting that you say people will be annoyed. Mm. Um, it's on the matrix. Okay. I'll say that. So um, whether or not other builders would be interested in putting it on their, on their bike remains to be seen. There may be some private customers that think it's a great idea. It is quite distinctly bastion in its aesthetic. So um, we're not sure how that'll be received. Um, some people might be fine with it. Um, the limit is going to be our um, c production capacity. So obviously, as I said, we've got some customers that are already waiting for it. We'll be filling their stuff first and then um, we'll see how the demand goes. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, you can see all the details, all the photos, uh, potentially even a video all on cyclingtips.com. Cheers, Dave. Thank you.